we say a functor is an embedding uh, if it is injective on objects. All right. And I just wanted to make that definition so I could say what the Oneda embedding is. Uh, yes. So, uh, well, I guess you might argue that, that some part of what I'm about to say is, is uh, a corollary of, of the Oneda lemma. All right. Um, we have functors. C into set C op, C op. Um, so this is going to take an object and send it to the functor from C op to set. And we have a functor from C op to set C. So this is the category of functors from C op to set. This is the category of functors from C to set. Um, oh, I should say what this is. And given a, um, a morphism from x to y, this first one sends us to um, F lower star post composition. All right, now we have one from C op to functors from C into set. Which one? Up here? Because, because F upper star is covariant. Because this is, this is pre composition. So if I have like, Wait. No, 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 no. This was right the first time. It's lower star. Because I'm going, f I'm doing post composition because I'm going from this functor to the functor of maps into y. So this, this is um, the natural transformation c blank x to c blank y. Which, if you fix a here, takes a map from A to X, and then sends it to the map that goes from A to X to Y. OK, so that was, yeah, this is lower star. All right, good. Um, the point is that this functor is from C op. But this functor is from C. All right, so this takes us to C X blank, and and takes f from x to y to f upper star. OK, which is the contravariant version of that. All right, that's the Uneda embedding. These are full and faithful embeddings. OK, that's, I just wanted to write that down. Um, but now we're going to move on to, or move on to slash back to universal properties. So we talked about universal properties before. Um, I didn't really define what a universal property was. I just showed you a bunch of examples of universal properties. Now we're actually going to define one. So we'll define what a universal property is. A. Universal property. What is such a thing? Uh, so it's a universal property of some object. So it is expressed by uh, a. 
representable functor. And a universal element. Uh, X in Fx. So F is representable, um, which, which means that Fx is a set. Uh, so um, which which defines a uh, natural isomorphism alpha from representable functor on x to f. Uh, via your nader. So by via your nader, I mean that x is alpha x identity x. Um, we can also say the same thing, but with this functor the other way around. So it can be, it can be a representative functor of either variance, uh, in which case this represented functor would be um, maps from blank to x rather than from x to blank. <coughs> All right. So also notice that like I've said that the universal property is expressed by this functor and this x. So um, I'm still not really defining the, what, a uni, what I mean by universal property, because I could pick some other functor and universal element which represented that, that universal property. Um, so it's, I'm still being a little bit uh, shifty here. Shifty is a good word. All right. So let's see an example. Um, so recall that uh, from, the, from the start of this that the forgetful functor from ring to set uh, is represented by um, single variable polynomials, single variable integral polynomials um, with ring zx uh, to R. This, um, these components of the natural isomorphism were given by choosing a place to send x to. Um, so we have we have this isomorphism. Uh, and in particular, we can replace R with, um, with the representing object. So we have maps from the representing object to itself. This is supposed to be isom naturally isomorphic to the representing object. And so we can say where the identity on ZX gets sent. And what do we have to say? We have to say where x goes. Well, if this is the identity, it sends x to x. And so this sends the identity to x. <coughs> All right. So, so a universal property of, uh, of zx is expressed by the functor by the functor um, maps out of it with the universal element being 
x. Mutant set x. All right, where this thing is a set now and not a ring. Just okay. Uh, another example. This is going dry. Another example. Uh, so, given uh, so w, v and w are vector spaces over some field f, uh, we have a functor by lin uh, v comma w blank, and this is a functor from vector spaces over f. The set and it takes a vector space X to the set of bilinear maps. So it takes it to bilin VW X, which is the set of, bi of maps from V cross W to X such that F is bilinear. So this is something we defined when we talked about tensor products a while ago. Um, and it just takes a map F, uh, G, sorry, from x to y. Wait. Ah, yes, OK. So it takes a map. A uh, map of vector spaces, so it takes a linear map, uh, g from x to y, and it sends it to the map. So I need a map between these bilinear sets for x and y. So it, uh, it takes a map um, to the map g composed with f. Uh, and an important thing here is that if I do this bilinear map and then compose it with a, with a linear map, the thing that I end up with is still a bilinear map. That's something you can just check directly. Um, I'm not going to do it here. Yes? I mean, for all intents and purposes, you can say that a universal property is such a functor and a universal element. Just you can say that that's the data of a universal property. So the data of a universal property of this is this functor and this element <coughs> of the image of the representing object under the thing. Okay. So now recall how we defined. Um, V tensor W. So we defined V tensor W by this thing. We wrote um, we have V cross W, we have V tensor W. It came with a map, um, a bilinear map, so this is bilin. And that given any other um, vector space and a bilinear map here, we have there existed a unique linear map filling that and making the triangle commute. That was that was how we defined um, uh, ten, the tensor product of vector spaces in the second lecture. Okay, <coughs> so uh, so this is is a vector space. Uh, such that linear maps from V tensor W to X are in a bijection with um, bilinear maps from V W to X. All right, that, and this is precise. This statement 
is precisely the information of this diagram. If we have a bilinear map in here, it gives us a linear map here by this thing. And if we have a linear map here, well then composing that with this bilinear map gets us a bilinear map here. Um, all right. Uh, this is natural in x, um, this functor. Is that what I'm saying? Mm. No, I want to say this bijection is natural in x, and uh, you should verify that if you don't believe me. Uh, so but this functor, by lin v w semicolon blank, is represented by v tensor w. Okay. By your nada. Um. Uh, this is determined by some linear map or some bilinear map. It's determined by some, um, let's say, I uh, in. I lin from VW to V tensor W. Okay. Right, so this this is um this is some set. This is the sort of thing on the representing side if you put X as a blank. Um, so, under your nader, uh, what am I trying to say? There's a, there's a natural transformation between this bilin functor and vect f v w blank. And under Yoneda, this natural transformation in this direction, this direct up direction, is determined by a map here with the representing object in here, which is it's determined because it's where you send the identity on this representing object, right? So this is some natural isomorphism. If I replace x with v tensor w, then the, Yoneda, then the Yoneda lemma says that this natural isomorphism is entirely determined by where the identity on v tensor w on this side goes to here. And it will go to some, some i in this set. Does that make sense? No? I feel like the, uh, I just. Right, so the point was that. Um, so, so, so the, so the, Yoneda lemma was we had, um, we had Hom from C X blank to F to F X. So C X blank. This is. Vect f v tensor w, and this is by lin. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. So 
the V tensor W blank to violin um, violin V W blank. Okay, so I'm taking the home set of this. And then the bijection takes me to, well, by Lin applied to x. So it takes me to um, by Lin of uh, v w v tensor w. OK? So now if I take a natural transformation from here to here, then by the Yoneda lemma, I said that alpha, so if I take some natural transformation in here, alpha, this goes to alpha of the representing object, which is v tensor w applied to the identity on v tensor w. And so this is whatever the identity on v tensor w gets sent to under this natural transformation. So I have a natural transformation. So I've, I'm not choosing some natural transformation here. I've fixed some natural transformation by this thing. And so I have some alpha. And it's determined by where it sends the identity to here. OK, so by Yoneda, we've, we're saying that this, this natural transformation is entirely determined by some bilinear map from v cross w to v tensor w. And that's this map here. That's this map here, this, <coughs> this, this sort of defining map. All right. So universal property of v tensor w is by lint v w blank um, with the universal element i from v cross w to v tensor w. And if you know the standard construction of, of tensor products, this is v sends v comma w to v tensor w. Um, but I'm not going to go through that here. So we can see that i is the I initial. We can see that i is initial in the category of bilinear maps out of v cross w, whose morphisms are linear maps, making the triangle commute. This is why it's a universal element, the fact that it's initial. Um, so given a representable functor, we really want to construct a category in which our universal element is either initial or terminal. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you what such a category is. So we have. And that'll be the last thing I talk about today. So the category, category of elements so it's going to be called, I guess, integral symbol f. Uh, and this is going to be for some functor just for some functor intersect. <coughs> so it has as objects <coughs> um, x comma x with x being an element of the category and little x being an element of the image of that object because it's in set. <coughs> and a morphism 
from x little x to y little y is a map uh, f from x to y in our category such that its, its image, so f applied to it, which is in set, sends x to y. All right, so I previously described comma categories. And this is an example of a comma category. Uh, so this is the comma category. And it's the comma category uh, star comma f, or star over f. That used to be a comma which was bad notation. This is much better notation. All right. So uh, when we set up a comma category, we wanted some category A, B, and C, and functors into C. Uh, a is going, oh, this is unhelpful. Uh, Let's say we wanted functors um, from oh, well, we wanted we wanted functors from two categories into some category that was the target of both functors. So here we're going to have star, which is from the functor one, which we previously described has one object and one identity morphism. Um, this is going to go into set. And this is going to be our functor C, so this is going to be F. OK. So what were the objects in such a comma category? So the objects were triples. So it was an object in, the, an object in, um, in this category, which I'm calling star. So that the, one, the single object in one, uh, some object X in C, and some morphism, which I'm going to call little x, leadingly. So I wanted star is an object in one, but there's only one such. So I could actually drop that off, and it doesn't matter, because it provides no information. Um, x is an object of c. And x is a map in here from the image of this object to the image of this object. So that's an, from star. And I'm going to say that this is um, this, this thing picks a singleton. So star is a singleton. So now I'm abusively using star both for the singleton, for the functor, and for the one object in that functor. I'm using star for three different things. Um, and it sends, um, so it's a map, so little x is a map from star to f of x, which is some set. Um, this is a choice of element in f of x. So I've just said that this is useless information. There's only one such object, so we can drop it. And so the objects in this comma category are precisely objects of C together with some element of F of C, which is what we said over here. <coughs> OK, now a morphism in our comma category going from star x, x to star y, y. Uh, is a pair. It's a pair of morphisms. Uh, what did I say here? Say delta and gamma um, with, OK, delta is a map from star to star in one, but there's only the identity. So 
because we talked about common categories before, and I said I wasn't going to bring them up again. But um, there's there's like a lot of stuff about comma categories, and so it's useful to be able to um, say, oh, this thing is a comma category of some sort. Um, all right, gamma is a map from x to y in C. Uh, and this needs to satisfy the following triangle. So I have star, star. This is um, the identity on star, which is the image of the identity on star under the functor star. Uh, so that's just equality. So in fact, let's just uh, let's just get rid of this top bit and just put star here, and we can ignore delta because it's because its image is just going to be equality. Um, and then we have f of x, f of y. This is going to be little x. This is going to be little y. And this is going to be f of gamma. And we want this to commute. But asking that to commute is precisely saying, oh, I'm sending a singleton to x here and then to f of gamma. And I want that to be equal to um, sending the singleton to y here. So that this says that f of gamma of x equals y. That's precisely the condition that we started with for morphisms. So this thing is a comma category. Um, and I wanted to say that, so this is for some functor from a category into a set. Uh, if we have a contravariant functor into set, then we have um, the same objects. Uh, but the morphisms, so actually, regardless of the variance of the functor, we still use this notation to represent the, to mean the category of elements. But the morphisms from x comma little x to y comma little y um, is a map. All right, and now it's a map f from x to y in C such that f of f y is equal to x, because the arrow is turned the other way around because of contravariance. Um, there's more to say about the category of elements, um, but uh, it's, somehow, it's something I just wanted to put on the board. We don't really have time to talk about it because there are sort of more important things to talk about. Um, uh, so, so the point is that um, I said that that a universal property is is some functor and a universal element, and by universal element I mean some element which is initial or terminal in some category. And the category in which it's initial or terminal is the category of elements. Um, all right, I'm going to stop there. Um, <laughs>